by Trisha Yearwood, and then at, yes, uh, followed by uh, Opry Next Stage, uh, Country's Rising Sound featuring Chapel Hart, Ashley Cook, Connor Smith, moderated by Kelly Sun. By the way, uh, anyone else here from the Midwest? That's where I'm from, Chicago, no cops, and White Sox. Uh, Sam Alex, host of the, I don't know, the CMA nationally syndicated Sam Alex show, and I uh, had a chance to make my Opry debut this past Friday night as a guest announcer. Dream come true after 20 years of radio, so, uh, thank you. I also had a chance to MC the Restless Road and Friends Dump Tank at 2nd and Broadway, the Hard Rock Stage, all yeah. been leading up to this. I've been so pumped up for this panel you're going to see shortly. Oh, by the way, uh, after the uh, Opry Next Stage at 12.45 will be Pam Tillis, live and unusual. Then at 1.45, the CMA Foundation presents Broadway Bound Musical Theater Showcase featuring Chrissy Metz from This Is Us. And then finally at 2.45, Big Yellow Dog Showcase featuring some amazing up-and-coming artists. So please uh, download the app, pay attention to weather. This is a good place to be. Bridgestone, parking garages, etc. Let's get on with it. I'm very excited to welcome a artist after three decades in the spotlight, numerous Grammy, CMA, and ACM awards to her name, countless multi-platinum certifications, millions of fans around the world entertain. The same passion still motivates and moves Trisha Yearwood today. <laughs> the singer, actress, author, chef, personality, and entrepreneur derives deep fulfillment from simply walking up to a microphone and pouring her heart out of a way of celebrated with her powerhouse voice. In 2019, she had her first solo full-length uh, album since 2007 with a collection of Frank Sinatra covers and the uh, original entitled Let's Be Frank. Love that album. Later that year, Trisha unveiled her highly anticipated new single, Every Girl in This Town, setting the stage for the 2019 release of her first full-length country record in over a decade, Every Girl and a Nationwide Tour. And uh, it includes a new acoustic re-recording of her uh, first album's lead single, She's In Love With The Boy. <laughs> Trisha made history when the original vaulted to number one and cemented her as the first female country artist to have a debut single reach the top of the country charts. She made history once again in 2021 with the most listened to country song by a female artist in Billboard Country's Airplay charts. Please welcome, because we all know and love, Trisha Yearwood. Thank you, Trisha. Uh, hi, are you guys excited to be here? I don't want to waste any time because I want to get this chick out here. Um, I love her so much and I want to tell you that I represent all of you because I'm so stinking excited. Please make welcome the one and only Winona. Judd Head. <laughs> does it really? It does on the back. What? Next 
Next generation is exactly why I do that, because I want the next generation to be Judd savvy. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've never seen me in concert before. I'm curious. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Hi. I'm just going, I have those shoes. I have those exact same shoes. I'm almost as cool as you, not really. I do, I have those shoes. I'm obsessed with you, and I'm just going to say that out loud because it's going to be a terrible interview because all I want to go is, remember that time when you did this and you were so cool? I'm going to totally Chris Farley you. I just, I do want to say I think I represent, I know I represent everybody in this room by starting off by just saying thank you for, 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 the very beginning of realizing that you had this gift and sharing it with the world, but also um, walking through the fire you've walked through to, to continue to be, um, and, and even when things have been really difficult to, to keep moving forward, because I think one of my favorite things out of tragedy has been that you, I'm seeing you everywhere and hearing you and I'm loving it and I know everybody is loving seeing why. We love you. Everybody loves you. And having been on that Judd's tour with you for a couple of shows, you were such a badass and such a rock star. I'm sorry, girls. Um, such a rock star. And I know it. I know it was not easy for you, but you just, you just did it. I mean, tell everybody how you're feeling. How you feeling now? Well, Trisha. You, can you know what I feel? I feel overwhelmed because it's a lot to show up here. I've been doing it for 40 years. Woo! 40 years at the CMA Fest. I still call it fanfare. Because we go back to where the fairgrounds, there was no air conditioning. And I just remember being 17 and 18 years old and being still poor. We didn't have the hair extensions <laughs> and the lashes. If you look at the photos of me, I have no clue. And after all these years, I just feel like I'm getting old. I just turned 59. No, I, I said I feel on a bad day. On a good day today, I feel freaking fabulous. Thank you. That's what, that's what life is. But when you have a voice like that, you should feel good every day. You should wake up and look in the mirror and go, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm one on a judge. Sure. I mean, we, you and I was talking. You do, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're not talking about me. This is not my therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, we, you were a little, a couple of years ahead of me, we're the same age. And I heard, when I heard the Judds on the radio for the first time, and I told you this story that you did not know, um, I was working in Georgia um, on a summer job, driving a long distance back and forth, and I heard Mama He's Crazy on the radio. And I, that's what I did. I had this mixed sense of joy because I was hearing something that I had never heard before, and then this in total sense of dread because we're the same age, and then it's like, okay, well this girl has this big boy, she's doing it, I just might as well stay here in Georgia, it's over for me. But instead of doing that, I did for a minute, I pulled over to the Kmart, I bought the EP, played it all the way home, and then I, I moved to Nashville. I mean, really, that, it had a lot to do with me moving to Nashville. And then when you were on, when you and, and your mom uh, did the final tour, and you went solo, and you were on MCA, and I was on MCA, then I was just so in awe. We just, we've always sort of known each other, but we've never really been friend, friends. We've been friendly, but never really friends because, I don't know, I think I was just really scared of you. <laughs> I mean, because I'm good. <laughs> and I don't, do you know, but I don't think you understand. It's a, it's a, it's a respect thing. It's a little bit of fear too. I mean, I, Singing with you on stage was a highlight of my career, but I was also terrified, but it was so fun. And did you have fun singing with all these different artists who came in to sort of help you help you get through that, that tour last year? I did, but it was nerve-wracking. Um, by the way, we have a duet that's gonna come out on a Judd's record. And it's the beginning of something really great, and I look forward to seeing what comes about. Um, here's the deal. When you get older and you see these young girls coming up in the business, you're like, well. 
because you have experience and wisdom and you're older. And girls, you're gonna be in this situation someday. These little sweet baby faces are gonna be 16 and 17. And I see these young artists and I just wanna tell them what to do because it's such a hard business. It really is hard to tell you who you are and what you should do and how to do it. And I just felt like a mother hen. I did, I felt like a mother hen. And I just wanted to hold Kelsey and say, never let them tell you who you are. And I tried not to give advice because it doesn't work. But what I did say is, this is what didn't work for me. And so I just like, when I sang with, um, I sang with so many people. When I sang with Faith Hill, I've known Faith Hill since she was a teenager, you know, and she's now this diva. And it's just interesting to see them come up in the business and to make it. And I just felt really love, love like, like a grandmother. I felt like a grandmother. On a bad day, I felt really old and I felt like, well, am I still relevant? Do they care? And I see that you do, and that's what keeps me going. So I'll be honest with you, it was very nerve-wracking because yet I felt so honored because Kelsey loved the songs. She legitimately sang them well and she knew the songs, which is like, well, it's exciting. It's really exciting and it's nerve-wracking at the same time. When you first, since we're celebrating the 50 years of fanfare slash CMA Fest this year, when you first, do you remember what it felt like the first time you played fanfare? And with, as, as I had no clue. Time? I didn't have, I don't think people understand how scared I was. And it took me years to feel, I don't know about you, but I had panic attacks and just fear-based because I didn't know, nobody ever said, here's how to do it. Mom and I went from, I went from high school, graduation, to fanfare, literally. So I had no experience. I didn't know what to wear. I wore just whatever I could to match her little prissy butt. <laughs> and I did my best. And the hair is just so, obviously we do not have someone helping with hair. And I look at those photos, but they're precious to me because I just didn't know what was going on. And it took years for me to finally say, I know what's going on. It took me probably 20 years to get there. But I was little and sweet and simple and quiet. And I don't know who that girl is anymore. But, <laughs> but when you opened your mouth. Oh, that's another side. Not, not the talking part. When you opened your mouth to sing, it was undeniable, and I think yeah. that transcendent. Nobody, nobody said, "I want to do her own hair." hair. Yeah. Like you, you know what to do when you sing. You own that. Just like you all have gifts, you own that gift. That is your gift from God, and what you do with it is your gift back. I knew what to do, and it was like, "Mama." <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you did. I think that that is the lesson for anybody here who, whatever it is that you want to do in your life, we're all afraid. I think you look at somebody like Winona and think, this woman had to have just, you know, been born and said, I've got this. Because when you're when you're successful and your dreams are coming true and all the things that are happening, you 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 look at somebody else and think they really they really know what they're doing. And I didn't hear, I'd heard this term just a couple years ago called imposter syndrome, which I think it's ex explains me greatly of like pretending I knew what I was doing and other people around me thinking I knew what I was doing and having absolutely no clue. But, but knowing that I felt like I had to sing and I had to figure it out and just face the fear. And I, I, I we're so alike. You and I are so alike. It's amazing to me. We have imposter, here's the deal. When you watch the uh, documentary, I think you're gonna see some of the stuff that happens obviously behind the scenes where I'm going, what the crap am I gonna do? Because I'm going up out of a toaster and I get caught, my cape gets caught in the toaster and I have to sing on my knees. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna stop singing in front of 20,000 people? No, I'm gonna sing on my knees. So you just have to figure it out yeah, on I mean, the fly. Oh yeah, I'm on the fly, I've fallen down, I have, you know. Who is that over there? <laughs> Did you keep it down over there, please? I have Winona Judd in the house. Excuse me. <laughs> I have a 
all these fancy questions I'm supposed to ask you, but I don't oh, really yeah, want right. to ask you. We're not going to get to maybe ten of them. We're maybe. not. I'm a terrible interviewer, and like I said, I just I just love you. That's just all I want to say. Um, I do want to talk about since you brought up that we have done a little something together um, in the studio. Um, I want to talk about that because talking about being kindred spirits, I went out to your house and. You've got, well, you've got more Grammys than me, but you've also got more dogs than me. Um, <laughs> but it was just so comfortable to me immediately. And what is really cool is when you step into a room and sing together, we were on separate mics, but we were five feet apart. And it just comes out and it's just there. Like really the first take was kind of like, okay, that, that was cool. We don't do it again just because it's fun. When you sing with somebody that and I, I really am, I have an ego. I think I can go out and throw my thing down. I feel pretty confident. It's so cool to sing with somebody that just makes you elevate your game to another level. And it was such a joy, such a joy to sing with you. It's so good. I wish we could play it today, but you'll have to wait. I know, I know, I know. I think it's coming out in the fall. I think the album's coming out in the fall. Um, it's a... I will, I will tell you this, there are things there are things in the works and things coming, so patience is a virtue. It's not my superpower, but we will get there. And <gasps> <laughs> So good. I mean, she did sing a little bit already, so yeah. I heard it. Um, I don't know what else to ask you. I don't know I don't, either. I, just, I, don't know. I think okay, we should just go, go out and, and just sit out in the middle sure. and meet yeah. everybody. Do you want to take Ow! a question? Can we take a question? You know what? What does it say? Mama Wanda? What does that say out there? I can't tell Mama Wanda? Mama Wanda? Mama Wanda? Do you know what that means? What does it mean? It's who you are. Hi, Mama Wanda. Hmm. Somebody want to ask a question? Oh, I, I want to ask you a question. Sorry, okay. guys. <laughs> Sorry, but she's... I didn't know this, actually. This, um, that you've been, you've been writing a lot more lately, and I want to talk to you about this because I've been writing, too, and I have not... Yes, and I want to talk to you about it because it says that you had, you've survived your fear of writing because you realize you've survived a lot. And what, why didn't, why, what was the catalyst for you? Because it's been a really new experience for me. Because I hear so many songs that are talking about trucks and stuff. <laughs> and as a woman, as a grandmother, as a mother, there are things I say every day. I just think it's time for me to be brave and to go out there and say because there's a generation out there who gets what I'm saying. I agree with that 100%. I do. I do. I do. I do. My, my experience has been that, you know, I mean, I think, I don't think that you have to write everything that you record, you know, and I, my, my heroes were like Patsy Cline and Linda Ronstadt and Amy Lou Harris who didn't, maybe write some, but didn't, but they were more, more known for interpreting a song and you didn't hear Patsy Cline saying, um, you know, crazy and go, oh, if she'd only written it, it would have had so much right, promotion. Right, exactly. So I think it's not necessary to be a great artist to, to write your own songs, but I do think there comes a point where you're listening and listening to songs and it's like, I, I, like, I like what that says and sometimes it's exactly what you want to say, but sometimes you wish it was just a little bit different or that. And I had somebody early on tell me, you're a good singer, you're not a writer. Interesting. And I was really young. I was in college so and I let, that I let that define me for a long time. And finally, I just was like, that doesn't have to be the truth just because... We're losing things. For instance, I say shit fire. <laughs> We're losing sayings because of the generation thing. There's another generation saying all these things that are short, like that's, that's, what is it? Um, that's fire. Right. That's their version. But I have things that if I don't say them now, they're going to get erased. Yeah. And a generation won't know what shit fire means. So, and you should. There should be t-shirts. <laughs> We're going to, so, so we need to put writing together on our okay. list of things to do. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that too. And you talked about your mama's cookbook. Um, we talked about cooking. Am I going to out you on everybody about that you're going to write a cookbook and I'm going to make you write a cookbook? Yes. Because you're a great cook. Yes. Somehow, by the grace of God, I'm going to try to put together my favorite 
memories around food because I have so many. And I'll tell you this, what, what you will love about it is, for me, because both my parents are gone, is making their food and, and my food, things that I have come up with over the years, it tells that story and it keeps them alive. And when somebody out in the middle of you know Wyoming says, I make your daddy's biscuits, It'll make you feel so good knowing that that food is really, it's another way, food and music go together. I just want to so connect well. with people. I want to connect with people. And if I can do that in a way that there's a young girl whose mother teaches her something in my cookbook, and then she starts listening to my music, then that's a win-win, right? Right. There's a way to connect on another level, which I'm looking for all the time. How can I connect with this next generation? And that's one of the reasons why I loved having Kelsey Ballerini on stage with me because she has a whole, you know, tribe that's now listening to me, hopefully. Yeah, and they so are. It makes me feel relevant and like, I'm still here. I'm still here. I have a purpose. I think that we don't need to allow anybody to tell us because we are, we've been here for a while or we are a certain age that we don't have more to offer than we had when we were in our 20s. I really do believe that. Like, I'm gonna offer you a hot flash right now for everybody. <laughs> Personal summer. Been there, done that. <laughs> but I mean, don't buy into, okay, well I did that and now I'm, I do, I know. you know, and, and I'm, I'm we're the, we're the as same. long as I don't go on Instagram or Facebook and stuff, I don't feel so insecure. But you're the queen. You don't yeah. even worry about any of that. Not quite. Right. I'm close. I'm close. <laughs> but Reba, to me, is the queen. You yeah. know how that works. I do. She's okay. next in line. So I got to wait my turn. Did That's you feel, okay. Did you feel like the women that came before us took you in their took you under their wing and how did who who in that because we we came along at a time when we got to really be around some legendary women and men who give us a story or two about well, Bonnie Ray Bonnie Ray took me under her wing um, Emmy Lou Harris uh, some of the greatest women in country music Tammy Wynette cooked for me and told me that she loved me um, of course oh my god I have so many stories about Loretta, it's not even funny, but I just, I got to know everybody. I was in the 80s, so I had all the greats, you know, George Strait, all the ones to look at me and say, Hello, Winona. <laughs> Johnny Cash, you know, all the ones that aren't here anymore that we take for granted because, well, we love the new ones. Here's the deal, at Fanfare, people used to come to see us specifically. Nowadays, I think the younger generation comes to see everything and everybody. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I feel like there's so much out there now. Do you know what I'm saying? And maybe it felt like there were less of us out there. I don't know. Maybe there's just more happening in country music than I am aware of. But I just felt like I remember the lines for the Judds, and I just remember meeting every single fan because we would stay five and six hours. I don't know if artists do that anymore, and if they don't, then that's just not okay. <laughs> Didn't we, I mean, I, yeah, I, had, I remember Garth stayed for like six hours, and that was just the way it is. Yeah, and I think, I think though, when I think about artists, like you mentioned, that there's just something so distinctive that sets you guys apart, that makes people go, I want to see them, if, no matter how far away I am, I want to I wanna make sure I get a chance to see right. them. And, and I, I think we were lucky to come along at a time, you know, I'm always proud of artists who know the generations that came before. And I've, I've been doing some songwriting and some of the people I'm writing with are telling me that the new artists they're writing with are coming in and saying, let's write something that's really 90s. So it's... Yeah! And I think good music stands up over time. We were back there listening to y'all sing every Judd song that came on while you were waiting for her to come out. And it's just, for me, good music. My friend Mandy said it. The music stands the test of time. It's good music, and it just it stands the test of time. It's I was 12. I mean, I just feel so young when I hear those songs. It's like... You look amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you. Oh, stop it. Stop it. 
I, you know, it's you. You were. I mean, we talk about we are the same age, and all the things that come with that. You know, it's not. It's not easy to uh, to age. And I try to. I feel immature, so I feel like that keeps me young. Um, I'm pretty immature, but you know, the wrinkles are a real thing. And I, I got contacts not too long ago, and they made me practice putting them in. You know, before that I could leave. And I, you know, I thought I looked pretty good, and then I put the contacts in, and then I saw all the wrinkles. And I was like, you guys should totally have a Botox place right next door. Because I, I would totally go next door right now and do that after seeing what I just saw in the mirror. But most days you just have to kind of let it go. Yeah, whatever. But whatever whatever you're doing, we all would like to drink that cool. Everybody thinks I've had stuff done. I, I don't. Yet, but I'm think, getting ready to. I think. I think you look... I don't... Yes! No. Yes! No. No, no can you give me a deal when we do a two for one? <laughs> What do you like best about yourself, and what do you not like about yourself? Because you don't I need to love change the fact that I'm, I forgive easily, and I know that that's not a great thing for the people that are going to take advantage of me again. But I'm forgiving. Um, I come from a, a, a family of women who were really tough and really, really strict. My mother and her mother both were very strict with me, and I had to forgive them a lot because they were so hard on me because they wanted me to be the best. And so they raised me very strict and very regimented, and they wanted me to stay in line and not, you know, end up in jail. <laughs> That's Go the way it was back then. It was harder. They were tougher. There was no, yes, ma'am. I mean, there was no, let me, you know, figure out if I want to do it or not. It was yes, ma'am. And so I had to learn to forgive because they were really hard on me but it made me the champion that I am today, so. Yeah. It's tough, you know, as a parent, because we, we, when we were in Oklahoma raising our girls and they were playing soccer, we noticed that the, the kids who were the best players had the worst parents that just were yelling at them like really hard on their kids. And our kids were out there, you know, picking the daisies out and, you know, when they're supposed to be watching for the ball to come, they were, but they were having a good time. <laughs> But it's like, if, should, we be, should we be tougher? And I think, you know, I think our girls would say that their dad was tough on them. But trying to, trying to instill those values. But I was not raised to really give my opinion. Like, it was like, this is how it is, and you're not going to... You're not yeah, there was no, it. hey, can we talk about it? No, 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 no. no. There was no time. <laughs> my mother did not have time for us to have a conversation. She was a single parent of two girls, and so she raised us with because I said so. That was a complete statement. Yeah. I mean, I get it, but also, I don't know. Because <laughs> I was easier on my kids and they turned out okay, but hey, everybody's different. But for me, I was raised to ever, to listen to my mother and believe her no matter what she said. If she said things were okay, I believed her. Things weren't okay, but she, that's the way she was. Everything's fine. You know, you heard that raised, being raised with women who just said, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's good. We've got enough to eat. We have everything we need. And that's the way it was. And we were raised on welfare. But we didn't know we were poor. Not until we were older in school. Yeah, she took, she took on that stress so that you didn't have to. Yeah, I think, I mean... That Read her book. She was quite the character colorful character and she led us to believe that everything was possible even um, not being evicted she thought I'll just go work and make up the money to pay for the rent and she did it somehow by the grace of God she got the money we were never evicted which is interesting because we were literally days within of getting evicted but you know what we made it and I'm still here after all these years, I'm still here because of you. Woo! I'm still here. And you're thriving. We're still here. We really are. We want to know what, after this, after this bit, very successful Judd's tour that you did, that I was honored to be a part of, and now that that, and you did, you did more dates because people would not let you go home. They wanted more shows, so you did more shows. What are you doing now? Besides taking late from me. <laughs> Not a whole lot. 
Um, I'm really lonesome. Uh, for you guys, I really will admit I'm really lonesome. I came home and I got really sad because it had to end. Everything has to end, right? All good things must come to a close. I came home and I went and got my granddaughter and I changed diapers. And she doesn't give a crap what number on the charts I am or how successful I am. She doesn't care. She loves me because I'm her Noni. Yeah. She calls me Noni. Um, but I went and got my granddaughter and I got really lonesome and I cried a lot. But I needed to cry because I didn't really cry as much on the tour. Well, that's not true. I just didn't cry like I cried when I came home. You guys literally saved my life, and I know it's gonna get heavy for just a second, and then we'll get back to light. But if I hadn't had you guys, I don't know what I would have done. Um, I really don't. So the fans really saved me, and you gave me purpose, and even when I was, I was getting a lot of crap because I was really dizzy, because I was so emotional and so overwhelmed. I don't know if you've ever been so emotional that you're dizzy. I don't know if you have or not. But it really sucks when you're on stage in front of thousands of people. But I did it because I knew I had to be with you guys because you're my family. You really are. You're not just fans to me. Um, you know, there was a time when I was so shy and I saw people as fans and I would sign the autograph and do the job and I loved you guys but I didn't really know you. Now I know you. I know you so well. I mean, I, I look out and I see you and you've been to more shows than anybody in the world. I know your family. I know what you're like. I know who you are. I'm like, oh, that's the crazy girl that climbs the fence. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, that's so-and-so. She did this. And I just know you so well. So I honestly, I came home. I'm working on a record. Woo! Yes. I'm working on a record. And I want to sing with her. And I want to do great things, and I'm still here to provide you with some sense of if I can do it, you can do it too. I feel like you all see yourself in me because you've grown up with me. I look at I look at Taylor Swift, and I realize all the girls that go to see her have grown up with her. Literally, she represents their whole life, and so there are fans out there that are looking to me to provide them with information to help them get through the crap you're going through. That's what music does, doesn't it? It helps us get through our life. So I'm making a record, it's very sassy sometimes, and then, what a surprise. I know, it's very surprising. And then I'm really tender and really sweet. Every now and then. I don't think anybody can put you in a certain, in a box, because I mean, I know that, you know, we put the judge, judge music into a place and when it came along, it's especially nothing like it, nothing like it on the radio between production, acoustic guitars, vocals, nothing like it. There was not a mother-daughter that got along enough to be on a bus together. I think we provided a service about that because there was no other mother-daughter that could do it. I couldn't have taken my mother on the road. I loved my mother so much, but I couldn't have been with her 24 seven. God bless you. Um, but then when you when you did your solo stuff and then you got to really kind of I mean we all got to see this bluesy kind of thing that just would, we all knew that you could do that had to be scary but also exciting and I guess my question is because I get asked this a lot well you made a standards record are you going to stop making country music it's like we can actually do lots of different kinds of music and it's all good you I feel like you could sing anything you want to sing. And I hope that you can do it all. Because I, I, when, I when I go see the next Y show, I want to hear all of it, you know? And I'm, I'm just wondering if you're, I know you want to, you know, the Judd's music is now your legacy. You, you're the one who has to make sure the next generation of Judd heads know this music. Well, I'm going to tell you something that you're not going to agree with, but that's okay, probably. Um, I was raised in country music. Country music is my foundation. It's like when you're raised in a home where, where the family is Catholic, you're raised Catholic, and that's just the way it is. And you go to Catholic mass, and that's the way life is. I was raised in country music, that's my foundation. I'm now on a record label called Anti Records, and it's an iconic label for women and men who, like me, can do it all. And here's what we have to figure out. What are we going to do? Are we going to do an 80s rock record? Are we going to do like 
Dolly Parton just did her rock record. Some people aren't going to agree with that, right? Some people want to hear Jolene. I get it. I love country music so much, I want to do country and blank. I'm at a place in my life where I don't want to just be country. I want to go out and I want to do a show with Bonnie Raitt. You know, I've talked to Bonnie so many times about this. I want to be able to do a show with her. I want to do a show with Brandy Carlisle. I want to be able to do a show with a Joni Mitchell or somebody my age. So I'm looking into the idea of what it feels like to be free and not have to be in a category. So when you say Winona, you know that one minute I'm singing something bluesy, the next minute I'm singing Young Love, because that's who I am. I'm that little girl standing next to my mother singing Young Love. Mm -hmm. And then the next minute I want to be able to sing with you and do something. And then the next minute I want to sing with Bonnie Raitt, heck yeah. And you can do it all. That's the cool thing about you. I don't think you can do it all at the same time, but I think it's Anti Records' job to say we're going to market this and we're going to do it this way because I have a lot of artists. I know, I know some of the greatest artists of all time. It's figuring out if it makes sense. Yeah, and it's I'm, like what to wear. I'm wearing this today because this is how I feel. And so I just want to, you know what it is, y'all? I want to be free. I've spent my life... Um, working really hard and this next record I'm doing this next record as if I couldn't fail what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail is what I'm trying to prove to people and show them that it can be done what would I do on this record if I really felt like I trusted myself enough to do a song about like I just wrote a song called broken and blessed this is me, I'm broken and blessed in this. I must confess, I'm at the end of my rope, but I keep holding on. This is me, and I'm talking about, this is me. This is who I am. And if you don't like it, bug off. <laughs> lovingly, lovingly, I say that Christianly. <laughs> You've earned it, and that's the one, that's the, that's the thing I love about time, is that time is absolutely <laughs> your friend, Yes. but that you get to a place in your life where you're okay with it being, this is what I need to do for me, and this is what I, <laughs> that's hard to do. It is hard face. to do, it is hard to do. Oh, I think period though, I think there are so many women out there that are trying to do too much. We love too much, we work too much, we do too much, and we don't give ourselves enough. And I'm writing a song about that because I've done the same thing. I've been a martyr my whole life. And I've been that martyr and I'm really tired. I'm weary from worrying. I'm writing a song about being weary of worry. Weary of worry is a song. I'm tired, you guys. I'm tired of complaining about something. I want to change it. But do I have the power to change it? Because somebody told me I didn't. And then we're Southern girls, so we also go through the thing of like, oh, well, what are people going to think about what I do? And what are people going to, you know, who, everybody's not going to like me. And you got to get over that, too. That's a hard thing to get over in the South. I actually had someone come up in an airport and tell me that they hated country music. Wow. And that was the first thing out of their mouth. And I thought, well, I have a choice. And I just stood there. And finally they said, but I love you and your mother because of your relationship. And we got to talking, and maybe I helped change their mind. I can't change everybody's mind, but I'm sure going to try like hell. Because my job is to connect with people. That's my life. That's all I want to do, just like today. Is she asleep? Did she fall asleep? She's been standing in line since, what, 8 o'clock this morning? She's By the there. way, thank you for standing in line all this time. That really says a lot to me. That's what they said to me when I pulled up today, that there are people that have been in line. Thank you for spending your time to see me. I know that we're having a, a little love fest up here, but I want to make sure that I say something to you and thank you for, because I literally wondered how many people would show up today, I'll be honest. No, I'm, I'm being very honest right now. I did not know how many people were going to show up. And I came into the building and it was really quiet. And there was nobody here. And I thought, oh crap. But I see now that I'm actually okay. I'm actually okay. I can go home with a good attitude. 
It's so funny how we do that. I, 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 that's that imposter syndrome. Gonna They're going to all figure it out. Nobody's going to show up. Is anyone going to care enough to show up? Well, I think it's your birthday party. How many people are coming to my funeral? How many people? I'm serious. We worry too much. What? I see somebody waving back there. Hallelujah. This is just like love. This is just, you just need to love yourself. That's what I'm here for. I'm just, I tell you every day how great you are and how much you, how amazing you are. So that's my job. I'm happy to do that every single day. Hey, are we going to have to stop at 1130? Yeah. They tell us it's a hard out. We don't know what that means. Why? What do you want to do? I want to sing. I want to sing. We don't have any companies. We don't need any. I tried so hard. You know I can't do more. It's the turn of the car. It's the close of the door. The lies you told. You know they cut so deep And I'll go home And cry myself to sleep Day after day She just points to Day after day You've been treating me bad You've been treating me bad Friends come up and say Why do you take all that? I'm doing harmony now, you go. You go. Making me more, and it's making me. Ow! Ow! I'll go home and cry myself to sleep. No, we do. I'm in, then I'm out again. You break the rules, and I just can't win. Broken me now, like so I can't But the point win. is, when you hear it, you're not sure who's singing because we sound so the same. It's interesting. When we did the harmonies, we kept flopping harmonies. You'll hear it eventually. But it was like, I was like, is that you or me? But you know what I love so much is the song starts, and it's a Judd song, and I know that. And I'm like, okay, everybody's doing like our song. It's weird. I'll be honest. When I hear somebody singing our song, it's going to be like, wow. And then you just feel like life goes on without you. And you just do, and it's okay. But it's strange to, to have that song start, but all of a sudden I go, Hey, Tricia. No, what did I say? You said, Hey, Tricia. And I said, Tell me about it, why? <laughs> that right there, I'm telling you goosebumps. I go, Hey, Tricia. Hey, baby. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, Whatever you want, Miss Jen. <laughs> but it's so exciting. Anyway, you guys, here's the deal. Um, I want to meet and greet after this. I think we're going to do an hour. And I'm going to try my best to get in everybody. I wish I could have more time. Enjoy. What does it say, sweetheart? Oh, wow. Your mother is 80 and she's here. And she waited in line. Yay. I, I, I see the microphone. I guess we were supposed to take questions. I'm sorry I didn't know that. Would you like to ask a question? I'm so sorry. Say, say your name. Yes, it is. I am Wanda. Wanda Morris. And I'm very close friends with some of your family. Out of privacy respect, I won't say who. But there's. I want to flip something on you. You tell us how much we mean to you. Let me tell you something, girl. I wake up every morning in your voice. I go to sleep every night to your voice. And I've been through some broken relationships, and you, my friend, pull me out of them. I love you. Hi, Winona. Hi, Winona. Hi. Hi. Man, I'm so sorry I didn't see the microphones. I don't have my contacts in, so. That's okay, Trisha. <laughs> Trisha, I saw you when you first opened for Garth in Calgary, Alberta. 91? Yep. I was the one who yelled, I love you, Garth. And he looks up, I love you too. And I looked at my husband and I said, see, I told you. 
want to talk to you after. <laughs> my Winona, when I met my husband, your song came out, He's Crazier Than Me. So I walked in the door, I said, He's crazier than me. And away I went. <laughs> but you married him anyway. Anyway, you, right. you lighten the path. See, that's what it is. I'm the backdrop of your everyday life. Some yes. people understand and tell me that, and I get it. I understand that you're out there listening yes. and living your life, and that song, Mama, He's Crazy, was maybe part of your relationship. I don't know how much, but... And I turned 55 just on Thursday. Happy birthday. And thank you. And I just want to say that you are a powerhouse, and the first time I heard you, I cranked that radio and I said, who the hell is this? <laughs> I've never heard you before. I have a 14-year-old daughter who just started singing, and I want to ask you, when did you really know how strong and powerful your voice really was? When I got in the studio, I was uh, 16. 16? That's when I really knew, I think. Because before then, I loved music and I would do it anywhere, but it wasn't, I didn't understand how powerful I was. Okay. But until I got in the studio and then I heard it back and I was like, oh my God. Okay. This actually might work. <laughs> and it did. Thanks to you. I think you are the best. You well, I'm top, 20. I'm top 20. I'm top 20. Sometimes. <laughs> But I lined up, you said Reba's the queen, but I lined up for you today. I didn't line up yesterday. I well, that's okay are. because we're neighbors and we know how it works. And just as long as you come see me every now and then, I'll share you with other people and it's fine. You bet. Because I love Reba and she love is you. in line to be the queen and that's just the way it works. She is. But you know what? She knows not to mess with me because wow. I will pull that wig right off her head. <laughs> <laughs> and I also lost my mother to a tragic accident, and I just want to tell Don't you, you dare quote me that on that. I love you. I lost my mother too to a tragic accident, and I want to tell you, I cried every day for 14 years because there's nothing like a mother's love, and I want you to know that when you feel that lonely, there's other people who are crying the same tears. I know that. Love you. I love you too. I love all of you. It's time. I know. It's time we have those. I think we should stand so they can get pictures, right? Yeah. Because we're so connected. And Winona's going to do a meet and greet after and take all the questions that I forgot to take because I didn't see you guys. I love you so much. I just love everybody who wants to tell me that they love me. <laughs> who doesn't want to hear that, by the way? And I appreciate, I don't know about all you girls, where are you getting these boots? These are bad to the bone. Well, yours are pretty bad to the bone. Everybody give it up one more time for Winona! <laughs>